What's up, what's up? It's time for Done Way Past Funny. With your host, G.D. Fenderson. Join us as we take a look back at the early works of seasoned comedians before they were seasoned with this week's guest, Allison Diane. It's time to get down and get dope with Done Way Past Funny. Hi, I'm G.D. Fenderson, certified forensic humorist and host of Done Way Past Funny. Thank you for joining us as we continue our interview with comedian and actress Allison Dine. Enjoy. As a matter of fact, now I'm gonna, and here we go. I'm going to do part three. And no matter what, I'm going to do part two shortly after that. I mean, part four, not two, part four. Okay. Because there's two parts left, um, and we've actually we don't know this. I don't, actually I don't know how long we've been talking, but this interview we've two been hours? On, we, yeah we've been talking for two hours, but the show didn't start for like maybe twenty. So we may be like ninety minutes in. I don't know, but uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay, I have no idea. So here we go, part three at the camel. The camel. Oh, man, I did quit a job once um, because it wasn't a good fit for me because there was a boss. And you guys just met me, but you can see that shit wasn't going to work out well for me. Uh, the thing I don't get about quitting is giving two weeks notice. I don't understand why employers want two weeks notice. Because don't they know nobody does shit after they give their notice? Okay, that would be like if I gave my husband two weeks notice to a divorce and he expected blowjobs in the meantime. <laughs> But it's a good thing I quit that job because about six months after that, that position actually got outsourced to India. And I don't believe in outsourcing, unless it is for blowjobs. <laughs> Needless to say, my husband and I had to move in with my mother. But she's sweet. She lets us live rent free, which amazes my husband because his mother started charging him rent in the womb. As soon as he popped out, she was like, you owe me nine months rent. <laughs> and extra for property damage. So my husband's female friend posted on Facebook that she doesn't think men should open doors for women anymore. Because in medieval times, it meant that the man was giving the woman permission to enter. Well, in 2019, I'm pretty sure it means that he's asking for permission to enter. Her pussy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it means. But I don't, um, you know, I don't get these women that just want to do everything for themselves nowadays. You know, they think doing shit like changing their own tire is the most empowering thing in the world. Fuck that, okay? <laughs> if Beyonce got a flat, she wouldn't change it. She would just buy a new Rolls Royce. Right? That's the kind of empowered I want to be. You know, back in the day when a ship went down, it was women and children first, because men were willing to die for us. Right? They were willing to go down with the ship. Today, I couldn't get my man to go down on me. <laughs> So, uh, I had it was funny when when you came back. You actually your frozen your screen was frozen for a second, and and it was frozen yeah. literally you falling asleep. It was like because <laughs> it was probably froze during a blink or something. Oh yeah, I was probably looking down or something. Yeah, yeah. and like and so she fell asleep during her own set. No, it's her, the screen is no, frozen. No, no, I was probably looking down like oh god. So. <laughs> Here's the thing that, that I'm surprised that nobody said anything. It's like you said your husband has a female girlfriend and I was expecting some kind of reaction. There was a reaction in the audience. Some women went, ah, oh. <laughs> did you ever hear, you ever notice that? No, but that yeah. makes sense. You go, you go. So my husband has a female girlfriend. It's like, ah, oh. <laughs> and, I, and I knocked up myself. That's your reaction. It's like, it's so cute. He has a female girlfriend. Ah. Oh. <laughs> he has a friend and she's a woman yeah that's actually that joke is based off of 
reality. So my husband, I, I'm on Facebook now, but when mm. we first met, I wasn't on Facebook. I do it now, you know, for, for comedy networking and stuff like that. And um, he showed me a post of a woman who said, you know, mention open doors for women anymore for that reason. Cause it was, you were giving like permission for the woman to enter. And then my whole thing was like, and you know, it gets into it later in the clip, but my whole thing is like, yeah, but I think he's just like asking like, yeah. to get laid to me. Like that's yeah. like, that's what it means nowadays to me. It doesn't, I'm not sitting there not opening a door going, I guess I don't have permission to enter because there's no man to open this door for me. <laughs> he's just standing outside waiting. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's like, a, you know, and, and I did so many versions of like that bit and like that. Yeah. Then like none of them really worked that well, but like I did one where, you know, something about like that, like if you had sex with a man just for like opening a door for you, men would just be like erecting doors, like <laughs> in the middle of sidewalks just to open them for us. You know what I mean? Um, I forget how that bit started, but it was something like that. But I went through like all these different versions of trying to do like something with it, but <laughs> nothing ever panned out that well. But the joke, like the car joke with Beyonce, that was kind of like my idea. Like, oh, if you get a flat, you just buy another car if you're yeah. you know, that wealthy and like that empowered. But that joke, bought, like no one laughed at that joke. <laughs> yeah, it's probably because she drives a Bentley and you said Rolls Royce. I got it wrong. I got yeah, it Yeah, and they knew. They're like, she don't know Beyonce. She does not know Beyonce. The Queen Bee has a Bentley. <laughs> so that's what happened. So you got to know y'all. You got to know just that. Yeah, right. I was like the Rolls Royce is like the is yeah, that would it's, be a different a different celebrity. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny because like my, my my wife and I I open the doors for her. I hold her chair when we go to restaurants, stuff like that. Old no old school, old school chivalry. Yes. And and I've had people <laughs> there was one well, we we came out of a restaurant and I opened the door for my wife. The valet had kicked, the valet went and got our car, brought it around, and I went and opened the door for my wife, not the valet. Uh, and so when I did it, I closed the door and I walked around, and there were some people waiting for their car. And the guy looked at me and goes, You're making us look bad. <laughs> <laughs> my husband always opens my car door. He always opens the door for me. I mean, he's older than me. He's, um, you know, I, I mentioned that. Well, he was 52 back then. He's now at 56, 56. He's 56, yeah. yeah. And so he's saying, like, very old school, you know, chivalry, you know, uh, does all that stuff for me. And I, I appreciate it. I like it. I just, like, there's an old, um, like, you ever watched The Golden Girls? Yeah. I just, I always think of this episode where, you know, Blanche goes out on a date and the guy hasn't been on a date in a while. And he hears that, you know, modern women, you know, they want to be treated equally. So, you know, he doesn't open her door. Like, he expects her to, like, pay, like, all this stuff. And she's like, what is going on with this guy? And he's like, I thought, you know, women nowadays want to be treated, like, equal to men. And she's like, I don't want to be treated equal to you. I want to be treated better than you. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, it's like, that's kind of, like, like where... I mean, and then maybe like younger women might not feel this way, but this is where we talk about like holding back. Cause like when I, I don't really do like what's about to come next. I really don't do this joke anymore because right. I feel so out of touch with like younger women. And I'm like, I don't know that younger women feel that way or like would relate to that. Cause things like the dynamics have changed so much, I think. Right. Between, between men and women. So like I still feel like I think I, I like I like a man that's chivalrous. That's that's what I like. Yeah, that's it. I, I'm not sure that I could be with someone who didn't understand that I'm not being condescending. I'm just being chivalrous, chivalrous, chivalrous. Yeah, yeah I'm being sh chivalrous. I'm being like a knight. Yes. That's something. Yeah, I'm being knightly. Exactly, exactly. And so I mean, I I love that stuff. I I think it's romantic, and I'm like I'm old school like that stuff. So. Yeah, so my wife and I, if my wife didn't like it, I don't know where we'd be because would be like, I can open my own car doors. Like, I know you're not stupid, but this is how I was raised. So go with me. Yeah. Right, right. There's like the, that dynamic. I just, I think it's, you know, I think it's nice. I don't know. I really, to this day, I, I don't know how men know, like, how to act and like how to flirt and all that stuff anymore 
You know what it's, I mean? It's, it's funny. I remember when I, I, I learned so much over the years that when when my when Carol and I, my wife and I got together, I told her, I said, look, I'm going to tell you now, I'm not going to know when we're, when we're dating. You're going to have to tell me when I've become your boyfriend, when we start dating, because I have no idea. Because I've, I've been with women for like a year, and it turns out we were just fuck buddies, but I thought we were dating. And I'd been with women for like a week, two weeks, and we hadn't even slept together, but she thought we were dating. And I have like no idea. I said, you, you're going to, you're going to have to tell me when we're dating. Cause I won't know. And I, yeah. and I, think, and I think after like the third date, she goes, we're dating. I was like, okay. I'm, good to know. I'll, it's good to I, know that you yeah. were, you were cool with it. <laughs> yeah. I need to, I need to know that. Yeah. Cause up to then it's like, I, I have no idea what's going on. I'm just going to, you know, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to treat you the same regardless. So that's another thing. I don't, I'm not going to treat her any better because we're dating. I'm going to treat her the way I'm going to treat her period. No. Right. Right. And and it doesn't and it doesn't get any better. So that and that was a problem with my first wife. My first wife thought, and I treated her very well, but she thought that once we got married, it was going to I was like going to step up my game. It's like no, it's not like I'm going to open the door twice for you. No, no, I'm gonna yeah, I'm right. gonna do the same. I'm this is it. This is who I am. It's the, yeah. the same polite chivalrous right. person you've always right. been. <laughs> and, and, I, and since I didn't upgrade, she thought there was like two me's, like the, the dating me and the married me. It's like, no, no. And she was so disappointed that it's like up the game. It's like, no, this is it. <laughs> well, usually the dating, like for most people, the dating version is the better version. <laughs> oh, like I said, she was like I said, she was she was my first wife. She didn't know any better. She's a work in progress. Yeah, I got it right the second time around. <laughs> and now you, you the, 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 the two weeks notice one. Your two weeks notice joke, I, that's really, really neat. I, I, there's a friend of mine who has a routine. It's an act out. It's a complete act out. She okay. just, she does the setup in the beginning and she says, um, I'm a woman. She just, she says, I just turned in my two weeks notice and I'm a stripper. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and she has, she has somebody come up from the audience. And they sit in a chair, and now she's a she's pretends to be a stripper who's on her two weeks notice. She just doesn't give a shit. So she's like smoking, you know, she's smoking, and she's like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And how's that? How's that work for you? Yeah, and she just goes through the motions, you know. It's like she's not even dressed in her stripper clothes. She's got like, you know, she's like jeans, a sweat sweatpants, you know. It's like I'm a, I'm a stripper on my last two weeks. Like she's like, she's wearing sweatpants. God awful clothes, her hair, no hair's all messed up. She's not, no, and she's just like, okay, fine. Yeah. We're not twerking, smoking a cigarette while she's twerking, drinking, no, got food, eating a sandwich while she's like, she's like dancing in the space, eating a sandwich, dropping the food on them. And I like, this is so hilarious. That's, what, that's great. And it's funny because I forgot, because I haven't seen this clip in a while, that I did the joke that way, because I actually still do that joke. But mm -hmm. now I say, um, I never understood why employers want two weeks notice. Like, it's as if they think you're going to do work after you give your notice. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. the way I say it now. And sit, instead of saying, "Don't they know no one does shit after they give their notice?" <laughs> yeah, um, and, so I forgot that's how I used to say it. <laughs> and I also still do the property damage joke. I did that on the Paul Santo show recently. Now, how tall is your is your is your husband a tall man, big man? Is he? No, like um, he's about five ten. So he's about a foot taller than me. Oh, okay. But well, still, that's, I mean, because when you said, because when you said damage, I think of a big baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, he has a big head. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because I was thinking, that's just one thing I thought, like, you could, like, mention that, like, what kind of damage, like, oh, yeah, he was a big baby, you know, he, no, he, you know, you know, explain what, why, why was there damage? Because some of those people out there had babies, and they're like, going, sugar, I had four kids, what damage? It was like, I was open for business, closed for business. I said, I'm ready to go. I was yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. That would have been a good idea to add something like that. Yeah. That's why, that's why I asked. That's like, but sometimes people have the material, but literally in the moment they forget, like something happens and their brain skips ahead, like skip ahead to like the next joke or something happens in the audience and it distracts you. Then you just literally your brain went in your brain. Your brain has delivered that line but your mouth didn't and you're just going on to the next thing. So that's why I, I say it, but I don't say it like 
you may not have thought of it. I'm just saying it's like it was to me, I that's where my brain went. Oh yeah, no, I didn't I didn't even think about that. And and it's probably too because I've never had kids. Oh so like, so like in my mind, everyone who has a baby is just like there's gonna be some sort of wreckage down there. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh well, I've never had kids. You can't do that joke until you have a kid. I'm sorry, no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> You know, you have to you have to really push a watermelon. Well, actually, you don't really have to have a kid. Just push a watermelon out your vagina. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, you yeah. you'll have to swallow a seed first. Swallow a seed and wait, Let but it then grow. push it out. Yeah, yeah, it grows and push it out. Yeah. <laughs> and that way, you don't have to raise the watermelon after you're done. Right. You know I mean? just, yeah. Yeah. Because if the kid you're stuck with it, yeah. But the watermelon, you could just say, okay, um, we're going to have melon balls now. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right. I grew yeah. it myself. Yeah, I grew it myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, now we're gonna. Which this is the fi finale. Hmm. Oh yeah, this is definitely the finale. I'm having I'm having difficulty with English today, and I'm hoping it's not a, a slow stroke rolling in. I, I hope it's just I've, I've I've this has been like a really I hope not. yeah same because I. My fear, my fear is that I get to the point where I'm doing comedy but not remembering my routines. I, I want to be done before then. I want to be done before I get to the point where I'm forgetting shit. Where I'm like, like, I mean, because that was a long time and that was just here. I can't imagine being like that on stage. I, I got to be done before that happens. You do like what Joan Rivers would do when she would have uh, like cards, like big cards on the stage. Oh. And she would just, you know, walk around and she, you know, would see the cards. Well, I have, I mean, I do have like, a, do I, do I have one set up here? No. See, when I have longer sets, when I do, when I do 30 minutes or more, actually, I have, I have my, like my water bottles yeah. and I have like several water bottles and I will put my set list on the back of my water bottles. Oh, that's smart. And so I, so. And that way I can, because I have a tendency to run my mouth, in case you hadn't noticed. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, and, and and so sometimes I run way askew of what the topic is. And I honestly can't remember what the next thing is supposed to be. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I really don't know. And so I get, and so if I'm doing a longer show, I have like, because I could do like a 30 minute set on the back of each bottle. And so I have like three bottles and I'll go like, okay, first set here. But it's time for the next half hour. Got a different bottle, and third half hour and less. So, and I show young comedians that because first of all, telling having looking up your telephone and shit like that—that's not professional. No, but, I agree. But the best of us have set lists, and I used to put my set list behind monitors. But then I found out that monitors are all in the same place. Oh yeah. And, and then I used to, and then at some places, if I'm on a risen stage where the audience doesn't see it, I will take my set list on the floor. You know, so I'll put it someplace, but then I went, that's, I'm having to think this out too many places. I said, hmm. I'll put it back on my water bottle. No matter, that way, no matter where I perform, if I got my water bottle, I got my set list. That makes sense. And it's perfectly natural to take a drink of water and yeah, and nobody and, thinks anything of it. And that's why I show young comedians and, and say, they'll go, that's genius. That's genius. I, I said, I know, I know. That's why I'm showing you. But the thing is, the word. But the bad thing is, I'm making them better, better comics because they're looking more professional. Yeah. Which means I'm getting less work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but can they all do ninety minutes? No, but not everybody wants ninety minutes now either. No, because yeah, they, no, they, no, they think they think that if they get like five comedians to do ninety minutes, they're going to have all their friends coming in. It's almost they're almost turning shows into bringers. Mm, you know? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And also, they don't they they also don't have the confidence in the comedians. Like, can he do ninety minutes? Can he be funny? Or this way, they just say, well, he only has to be funny for twenty minutes or ten minutes, and 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 the audience, if he's not funny, is only going to suffer for a little bit. But if somebody yeah. books me to do a ninety minute show, they're relying on me to be funny for ninety fucking minutes. Well, yeah. I, and, well, I'm saying, and so, and they don't look. They don't. They unless they actually watched. They went through and watched any of my material. They actually sat there, and no book is going to watch like my a 90 minute special of mine to see if I'm funny. They're not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, so, like, so it hurts strange. me. Yeah, it hurts me. You know. So, yeah. but, but I'm, but I'm only, I only do them because 
I can, but also I'm trying to document my funny. I'm trying to record all the stuff that I want to record before I'm done comedy. Yeah. I want to, I want to document, I want to all record it so that at some point I can sit back and go, okay, I tried. Yeah. And I, my plan is to do basically exactly what you did. My plan is to self-produce my own comedy special. Yeah. Essentially. That's, I mean, that, cause it's something that I've always wanted to do and I don't like, I agree. I, I'm, I'm not going to get like HBO, Netflix, no one's going to be knocking on my door. So I'm just going to do it myself. Yeah. Yeah, you know, why not? Same people who do like self-publishing that are writers. Yeah, you know, they just, exactly. You know, their books on their own. I'm going to do that and put it out there. So, yep. well, people who have their own kids instead of hiring a surrogate. No, <laughs> no, they just <laughs> yeah, because comedy is our baby. Comedy is comedy is our baby. We're going to have our own baby. I'm not exactly. trusting you to. I'm doing it myself. I do it myself. Exactly. And sometimes you need to like. For me, it's like okay. Here's the proof. Here's the proof I can do. Yes. Yeah this you know yeah. you're not going to give me the chance i'm gonna just do it myself and show it to you yeah <laughs> and they'll be like oh yeah big whoop what are you gonna do next no <laughs> i know right netflix is gonna be like eh. <laughs> yeah so I, i'm like i'm i'm fine it's like it's not that i don't care that i don't have a next book netflix special It'd be nice only because it'd be money yeah, but but as far as me, so, but as far as me doing the shows and them being out there, I have you know, as long as if, if someone people watch it, they had a good time. I'm fine with it. You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm I. My feeling is I'll probably just put mine on YouTube. Yeah, that's what my mine. I yeah. I have three. I, I have mine on like YouTube and um, um, Spark TV. S P A Car S P A. See, there's something wrong here. S maybe I just need a nap. S P A R K K T V. Okay. And it's um again like Spark TV. Spark TV. And it do, they do basically independent stuff. So oh, cool. yeah, so I have so I have like like so this this done way past funny, it will be on Knob TV, which is on Roku, and it will be on Spark TV. Okay. Um and and on YouTube, but it's Spark TV, but Spark is independent. I'm letting you know this because they do ser they do series, they are like sitcoms, dramas, stuff on there. Just independent artists who have no other platform. Oh wow, that's cool. Well, not no other platform, but it's it's for that you know. So there's other platforms. Yeah. Um. So that's I can give you that information also. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Okay, so this is part four, and this is only like a minute and something long, but. It was so here we go. So I just want to say to all the men, do not listen to women like this Facebook bitch. See, I'm, I'm from the Northeast, so I don't know if down south if you guys have this problem. But um, people, men in the North don't seem to realize that chivalry is the only reason women have left to want to fuck them. Okay, like we don't need to fuck you. For money, we have jobs. We don't need to fuck you to have babies. We got sperm banks. We don't need to fuck you to have an orgasm. A lot of y'all weren't good at that anyway. <laughs> See, now that's a good joke. So ladies, if you're, with, if you're with a man right now that did not laugh at that joke, you can do better. Yeah, that's right. You can do better. So I had a little chat with my husband. I sat him down and I said, look, if you don't open my door, I'm not gonna open my legs. <laughs> and if we're walking outside and it's raining out and there's a puddle, put your jacket over the puddle. Because if my lubitaires get wet, then I won't. <laughs> Because I'm a lady. All right, thank you guys. I'm Allison Diane. It's funny because I I don't know how I think that that ending is really like it's, it's that the thing about the, the shoes the uh, yeah and, and and then it, and because I'm a lady and that's like a perfect ending 
I was like, yeah, I, I think even if you did like a 90 minute show, you could end, you know, that would be like a perfect ending, but it's like, like you could end it with like the most raunchy thing. It's like, and, and, and when I, when my man eats me out, blah, 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 I, I expect to see juice down the side of his face and I expect him to be sweating and working hard because I'm a lady, you know, and that's it, you know, whatever. I just, yeah, I think, I think, I think that is such a, like a beautiful ending. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I so my husband to this day, he always says to me, you should do chivalry more. And I'm like, I don't. And that that joke is like so dependent on to like the crowd. And yes. Yeah. Like, you know, if it's a lot of men in the audience, they're not going to laugh. No, because the ones that don't do it feel like go feel like crap. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's such, it's such a, a female, you know, geared joke, you know, yeah. so I don't really do it a lot. But he's always like, no, that's good. You should do it more. No, like because, you know why? Because he doesn't. It doesn't make him look bad. Yeah. It's but right. but almost half the men out there don't do that. And they're gonna be like, oh, yo, bitch up there trying to get me in trouble, trying to wreck my marriage. You know, <laughs> it's just, it's just they're, they're gonna be they're gonna be mad. They're gonna be like, oh, you to be mad. no, and then and then the wife's like, how come you, why don't you open my door for me? Especially if they used to do it. And right. Then they stop. Stop. It's like, yeah, yeah it's like. Why did you stop? Besides, I don't know. I, I thought you could open your own doors. I don't know. Or I don't know. The doors got heavy. <laughs> I got I got the rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> there was like so many other things I've tried with that, like with that joke. It was like stuff like, you know, my husband doesn't open the door for me like anymore. And then he like wants me to give him a hand job. It's like my hand's too tired for opening all these doors. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> like, yeah. Like I came up with like so many other ones. I can't remember what they all were, but it was like um something about the bus, like something about getting something about getting off and getting off the bus. I can't remember. But it was like I tried like so many different things to put in there now there was uh and actually this is a this is very i can't even express how true this is it's i was i was with my first wife and we were walking through the airport now the way my brain works is that i notice things that don't make sense i notice patterns really i see patterns and when something breaks the pattern it catches my eye right away. Mm. So we're walking through and I, I'm seeing everything in the airport. I, I just, I just can't help it. I'm just seeing everything. And we're walking and this lady is wearing a white blouse, but a black bra. Okay. Okay. And the reason why I noticed it is because she, one of her buttons, her blouse was missed button. She skipped a button. So her blouse was open. Uh, so see, you yeah. See, see, you are, see, yeah. you're there, yeah. but and I see this. And, and it's like it's open here, and she was she was like a D cup easily, easily between C and D. I didn't. I'm not saying I noticed it, but I noticed it. You know, what I'm saying I wasn't yeah. I wasn't gawking, but I so I saw it, and so my wife and I kept walking, and I said, "Baby," I, and I stopped her. I said, "I'll be right back." And I turned around, I went to the woman, and said, "Excuse me, ma'am, you don't know me." And I said, "I just think you should know that your blouse is open." And I said, if you want it open, fine. And that's what I said, because I said, I said, if you want it open, fine. I'm just saying it's, but, and and I said, it's not a, it says, I said, it's not a pervert thing. I just noticed things like that. And, and then, I, then I made it really bad. I said, if you hadn't been wearing a black bra, I probably wouldn't even noticed it at all. You know, and I'm like, I'm really making it bad. But then she goes, but then she, so I'm trying to explain to her, I'm not a pervert. I'm just trying to be helpful. Yeah. And, and I don't know if I'm making it better or worse. But when she's, but when I'm done, she says, thank you. You know, I don't think most men would have told me that. Right. And, they would just be enjoying it. Right. And and so I did this. She thanked me. I go on with my wife and we start walking. And my wife goes, what did you, why did you have so much to say to her? And so I explained to her, I said, this is what happened. And then this is what she took out of it. Why were you staring at her tits? <laughs> I said, I said, no, no, I wasn't. I said, I wasn't staring. I said, you, as you know, how my brain works. I see things if the pattern is if, then it's broken, and I have. I know. I, I thought I was doing a favor. I said, I would. I said, if someone, if if you were, if you were in the same situation, I would like to think that somebody 
would be honest and and help you instead of let your tits hang out for the rest of the day. Oh yeah, no, I agree. I feel like it's similar, like if a guy's fly is down or something like that. Yes, like thing. Yeah. You know, if you notice something, like just let like hey, just in case you didn't realize. And I wish I had thought of that example 20 something, 30, 40 years ago. (laughs) I I was too bad, I was too busy being defensive to think of that. Thank you, Nell. (laughs) Where where were you back in 1999? In 1999, I was in Pennsylvania. (laughs) Oh God, where it's like, where were you when I when I needed that bit of wisdom? No, it wasn't you. Yeah. I'm GD Fenderson, certified forensic humorist and host of Done With Past Funny. Thank you for watching our continued interview with comedian and actress, Allison Dyan. And please come back to watch more of our interview with Allison Dyan. And when you come back to join us, bring a friend.